Hello my delusional gents, how are you guys doing today? So for this video I wanted to make a little miniature guide. I don't know if it will be miniature depending on how long the video will last, but the video will be on how to do frame traps or mix-ups with Yoshimitsu. Now I already made a mix-up guide before previously on my channel, but I'll make another one showcasing some of the frame traps and how exactly the frame traps works with Yoshimitsu. So there are four types of moves that I recommend to use Yoshimitsu to try to frame trap. I already said this multiple times before, but I'll just leave it on this video as well. You have moves like 3-1, Flea 4-2, and Manji 4-2. These three moves are plus 7 on block. So if the enemy tries to attack you with anything, you can just retaliate with Manji 2 or Manji forward 1 plus 2 to catch him off guard. So let's try using Flea forward 2, again, plus 7 on block. And I'm going to use Manji 2, which is 16 frames on startup. They're going to use a 10 frame on startup move. So right there you see, I ended up trying to use my 16 frames on startup move, which is Manji 2. Since they are minus 7 and I'm plus 7, they have to recover from 7 frames just to use their 10 frame move. But I'm already recovered before I can even use whatever move that I want to use right after. So if they have to recover from that move, I can then use Manji 2 and catch them off guard if they try pressing any buns against me. This is called checking your opponent. So whenever you hear somebody say checking their opponent, checking what they'll do, it's just stating that to see and confirm whether or not they'll press buns against you. If I do Manji forward 1 plus 2 instead, as you see, I can still confirm and beat them if they try using their 10 frame jab. But the weakness between using this kind of frame trap is that it can be ducked. So they, if they know the knowledge check of this particular type of setup against them, they can just duck the move so that way they don't get hit by the incoming Manji 2 or even forward Manji 1 plus 2 instead. So this is why you have to guess whether or not if they may know the knowledge check and then do 4 Manji 4 instead to catch them off guard. Now Manji 4 is a mid. So if they end up ducking any of your two options, your high options, then you can catch them off guard with Manji 4, but not after you use Manji 2 or Manji 4 or 1 plus 2. Because at that moment, if you do try to use, let's say, Manji 2, which still makes you stay into your Manji stance, and you try to go for 4, if they know that you already messed up, they'll just hit you with a wolf standing move, or they'll just get up from their crouching state and catch you off guard with, with whatever high 10 frame move they want to use against you. So that overall depends on them. Now, another move that I mentioned, the fourth move, this one is not from using certain stances to get yourself into Manji stance. Well, you can still go into Manji stance with doing this move. But instead of it giving you plus seven, it gives you plus three. Now, seeing that it's plus 3 on hit, this means that you can still retaliate with other moves. So let's say they try to jab you out when you use 3 slide 4. Well, I went for my down forward 1. Down forward 1 is 13 frames on startup. They still ended up using their 10 frame move to use against me. So we end up clashing against each other. But what if I ended up using my 10 frame move instead? I can then beat them out of their 10 frame move. This is another frame trap you can use against them, but this is only on hit. 
on block. This move is minus six. It's still safe. I just didn't block at that point, but it's minus six on block. So you're still safe, but you don't get any advantages when using three slide four against a blocking opponent. Now, in the case of using this move, three slide four, but holding up to go into Maji stance, this turns a plus three move into a plus 14 move on hit. So this means that regardless of what move they use against you, their fastest mid move, their fastest high move, they cannot beat you if you try going for Manji 2, Manji 4, 1 plus 2, or even using Manji 4 against them. They have to respect you once they get hit by 3 slide 4 if you go into Manji stance. So just to showcase that I'm going to use 3 slide 4, I'm going to go into Manji stance, and then I'm going to use 4. So the opponent tried to attack me with the 10 frame move. I still ended up checking them to see whether or not if they will use it, which they are, because the dummy has already been programmed to do so. But seeing that I used my Manji 4 and they got hit means that I am still faster than them since they had to recover for 14 frames so that I can then use my next incoming move and beat their 10 frame jab. Now another move you can try using besides just Manji 2, Manji 4, 1 plus 2, as well as Manji 4, sorry that I'm continuing to reiterate the same moves over and over again, but I got to, for the sake of you guys remembering what I'm saying. If you do 3 slide 4 and you go into Manji, you can also use your command grab, and it also beats their jabs if they try to jab you out of the air, or they use mid moves as well. So whatever they try doing against you, if they try to attack you preemptively, you can just still beat them with these four moves. But again, like I've mentioned, even if, even if they know this and you still decide to go for the three moves that I mentioned, in this case, Manji 2, Manji 4, 1 plus 2, and Manji 3 plus 4, which are all highs, besides the Manji 4, which is a mid, they can still duck the move. As you see, it doesn't matter what you use. Even if you're plus 14 on hit when using 3 slide 4 and going into Manji stance, they can still duck the move. So at the end of the day, this is more of a knowledge check against them. If they, one, know the knowledge of the setup, or two, if they're too impatient and try attacking you regardless if you're in Manji stance. At higher ranks, you'll see often that players don't disrespect you. They're, they will respect your setup and do nothing by simply either blocking or they'll preemptively fuzzy guard by flash ducking you to see whether or not if you would go for Manji 2. But if you end up going for anything else, so let's say 3 plus 4, again, they'll duck that move. But if it's Manji 4 1 plus 2, then there's a likelihood that they may get hit by the move if they're only flash ducking to get right back up. But if they hold the crouch, then they can essentially beat three moves. And if they flash duck and trying to be wary of the Manji 4 mid move, then they can still block it if they stand right back up immediately. But it's still a strong way of frame trapping the opponent into these four kinds of moves you can use against them, the four kind of strings. Now, of course, there's other moves you can use against the opponent besides that. There are moves that people don't really notice when it comes to attacks. Like, let's say you're 1-1 you're one, one, or you're 2-2, two, two, down 4-4, four, four, down 4-3, four, so on and so forth, right? All these moves are plus on hit. There's other moves, too, that I haven't mentioned, but I'm just showcasing some of the moves you can do with Yoshimitsu. At least the ones that are more important. So in the case of 1-1, one, one, it's plus 4. So since it's plus 4 on hit, the complete string is guaranteed if you hit them with the first hit. If they try pressing any button against you, you can just mash down 4 1. So let's say they try to retaliate against you. You see? Down 4 1 works. If you know for sure, they may go for a dick jab, since that's their fastest move they can use while crouching, since 1 1 forces them into a crouching state. You can go for a hop kick. Now, 
certain hop kicks have the properties that which I think it's all hop kicks really have the properties where they have low crush meaning that any low that you try using against the opponent will get evaded by said move this is the same case with down forward four down forward four is plus four on hit as you saw right there the cause you'll try to attack me I ended up checking them with down forward one and that beat their move the great thing about down forward one also is that I can go for the four and do even more damage or I can go for that as well but if they try doing anything else in this case the Yoshimitsu player does something else besides that of course they'll get hit for example I used to do a lot of back two back two is 14 frames on startup as you see below there on the corner so if I ended up using let's say 1-1 and they tried going for a dick jab we'll just clash same thing with down forward 4 so it all depends on you what move you want to be using to get the advantage off the opponent if you know about frame data you can use this against the opponent so again since I'm plus 4 and they're minus 4 they have to recover 4 frames and my fastest move that I can use right after that will be my 10 frame move but since in this case 1-1 one, one leaves them crouching I can't use my 10 frame jab I have to use something else so if you know anything about math which I hope that all of you already passed your math classes I know I didn't when I was in high school but I still barely passed either way point is that if you use 1-1 one, one, and it's your plus 4 and you do down forward 1 to check them now down forward 1 is 13 frames on startup so if you just do a little bit of math and you do 4 or in this case 13 minus 4 that move will be 9 frames while in the case of the Kazuya player since they're using their fastest dick jab in this case it's 10 frames on startup you add 4 to their frames turning the move into 14 frames but it's not really turning it into 14 frames they still have to recover only 4 frames in some situations if even when you do the math quote unquote math against the opponent with frame data they may still beat you even if you have the advantage because it doesn't exactly lower the frame data or increase the frame data it just a little way to help you guys out in trying to understand how to work around frame data with move I do have a guide on my channel if you guys want to see I'll link it on this video so that way you can then learn about frame data now I've also mentioned about down forward three down forward three I use my wolf setting four now if you don't know this I should have just mentioned in the beginning if you do down forward three down forward three automatically puts you in a crouching state for a split second and if you press any buttons while you're using down forward three besides the follow-up one which is this you actually can do wolf standing moves so let's say you do the one if you delay the move you do wolf standing one if you do down forward three into two you do wolf standing two so you can kind of use this against the opponent if you try to trick them into the follow-up you're trying to go for so either they may assume that you'll go for the follow-up like they say for example you do go for the one they get hit it's a counter hit and if you go into your no sword stance this actually becomes a big hit that leads into a knockdown so let's say if you use down forward three and again since you're already crouching if you hold down or down forward depending how you want to go about doing it you can catch them off guard with your samurai cutter or you can use full crash down forward four and if you condition them into noticing that you're trying to go for these two moves you can even try going for other moves besides that let's say for example wolf setting 2-1 or even going for a hop kick this in all applies a lot of pressure against the opponent into trying to see what you'll be doing next and depending on how trigger happy they are you can still try using this against them if they try going for highs as you see right there so it all depends on you and you're trying to make the proper read against the opponent are they too trigger happy or are they too defensive 
Either way, you still can catch them off guard. But if they're preemptively noticing that you're doing this and they make the proper read, even if they act as if they will be defensive, if they see that you're trying to go for something, they can still attack you and beat out the move you're trying to go for. Not all frame traps are universally perfect in how they go at the opponent. There's still ways to beat it. Now, if you were to use 2-2, for example, 2-2 two -two is plus 15. A whopping plus 15. Big advantage against the opponent. So they can't really do much of anything besides just wait it out for 15 frames. So what you can do in this situation, if you were to use 2-2, two -two, and they're too afraid to do whatever next, you can try immediately going into a crouching position to go into full crouch down 4-3 and get yourself a full launch. But depending on how much they know of this particular setup, they can just block and then they can launch you instead of you launching them. So you got to be careful when using this against them if they know the knowledge of that particular setup. But it's not over for you. You can still use other options. For example, people don't really know that from 2-2, you can go into Kencho stance. So by going into Kencho stance, since you're already plus 15, you can trick them into anything. One good way you can trick them, especially if the opponent is too unsure as to what you'll do next, go for Kencho back 1 plus 2. Not only does this kind of option select what they may do to you if they're too trigger happy and pressing buttons against you, if they try pressing a high, if they try pressing a mid move, as long as it's not a long range mid move, then you can then catch him off guard since back 1 plus 2 from Kencho has a bit of evasiveness. And since you're moving back towards the opponent, you catch him with the unblockable. So it's a real strong way of catching the opponent if they're too unsure of what to do because again, you're plus 15 and they just have to respect you. But it's not like they don't know of a way to beat it. They can still beat this move and that way is to act as a sidestep or side walk away from you. So if you see a Yoshimitsu doing this, which is simply doing that, they can just sidestep away. As you can see, they can just sidestep away if they wanted to. This is if they know what you're trying to go for. Most times, you may catch them off guard and they'll know what to do against you. And another way to beat it is also by simply just backstepping. As you can see. But that doesn't mean you can't just move forward and catch them. So as long as they don't sidewalk away from you, then you can still beat them if they're too afraid of your back 1 plus 2. Now, if you don't want to risk it and going for the back 1 plus 2 into Kencho stance, you can just move forward or just use other moves. Let's say for that one, if they try backing away, they'll get caught by back 2 1. Or you can just use Kencho forward 2 to catch them off guard. Now, they may block it or they may get hit by the move depending on how fast you do it. But it all depends on you. I would say using back 2-1 from Kencho is mostly unsafe, but if they do backstep away from you, you can still catch them off guard. And if you use forward 2, it's a lot safer, but they can still duck it. So your other option is to just use, let's say, forward 1. But only when you're not holding the move. I, let's say if you're holding your 1 button. If they end up blocking it, it's minus 12, so it's unsafe. Now there's other miniature types of mix-ups you can use with Yoshimitsu. For example, you also have two into back one. If you do the regular move, two one, it comes out like that. But if you press back when you're pressing one, you cancel out of the move. So if you kind of condition the opponent to be wary of the two one, they'll eventually just stand blocking. And that way you can then mix up with other options that you want to use. So let's say for example, they only start to like feel the conditioning that you're doing to them and you do two into back one. Then you can go for options like let's say Samurai Cutter. You can even go for Poison Breath or for your Command Grab. 
Or if you want to be tricky, you can also even use your unblockable windmill. But it all depends on you how they'll go about doing the move. So if you make a read and you know for sure they're just going to stand block against you, or even just try to either backstep away or even sidestep away, you can then decide what to do right after against them. You don't have to do that. You can just do this, for example. Catch them off guard if they do sidestep you. And again, you also have your full crash down port 4 if they don't block it. Now we'll move on to something else. One of the things you can do with Yoshimitsu also is like he's already known for his reset combos. So let's say if I do something like this. As you saw right there, if the opponent didn't crouch block me since they were just standing right back up, they'll get hit by the down forward three from full crouch and get caught by the launch. This gives me another combo that I can do right against them if they end up not crouch blocking me. If I don't want to use no sword stance to catch the opponent off guard, I can just not use that stance and use something else. That is an example you can try using with Yoshimitsu. Now it depends on the stage and it depends if you have the wall. So if you don't use exactly what I'm saying, you don't have to. It just depends on you how to go about doing the combo to get that reset. Here's another one you can try using. It happens shorter at the, end, at the beginning of the combo, but it allows you to also reset the combo from there. Here's a setup you can try using with no sword stance if you want to use your full charge two into one plus two from Kensho stance. So as you see right there, I can try using a particular type of setup, reset setup, that allows me to go into Kenshu 2 and then catch them off guard with the 1 plus 2 full charged. And if they end up blocking it or get hit, I still get something out of it. And here's an example that instead if they were blocking my move, they'll still get caught by that if they don't retaliate immediately. So this kind of frame trap or mix up option isn't exactly foolproof. They can still try to hit you. It usually works against opponents that are already fully conditioned or they're too afraid to retaliate against you. Because if you don't fully charge it, for example, you can still hit them. And if they try retaliating, you then get something out of it at least. So in this example, if they do try to attack you, if you don't fully charge it and you still catch them off guard with that particular setup, you can still end up getting a full knockdown. So you can set up something else if you want right after. But again, if they do end up, let's say, side rolling immediately, you can catch them off guard if they do try to press buttons. But if they end up side rolling into a mid kick or low kick, there's a chance that you can still get hit out of the move. But that's if they end up side rolling while they're fully knocked down. If they end up immediately trying to side roll or side okeme, then it will work. But if they end up just staying on the ground, grounded, and then they try to side roll you, then not only will you probably miss your 1 plus 2 attack, but then they have the opportunity to then hit you with either a wake up mid kick or a wake up low kick. But that overall depends on what they may do next. If they'll try to side roll immediately to get up immediately so that's about it i don't really have anything else that i can showcase you guys uh there are probably other ways you can mix up with Yoshimitsu. i do have other types that i can try showing you guys but it's gonna be a long video so maybe i'll find another time to then record for you guys for other mix-ups now i basically have given you like around 90 percent of the things you can do with yoshimitsu 
the other 10% are just something that you can try going for, but it's not exactly a exactly blah, 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 blah. it's not exactly a staple type of setup, but it's something you can try using against them. Because the thing about Yoshimitsu is that he's a trickster character. There are a bunch of ways you can go about him when it comes to trying to trick the opponent into types of setups. But not all of them are foolproof. And not all of them have a really strong offensive means of applying pressure against the opponent comparatively to the ones I mentioned. But they can still trick the opponent if they're just too aggressive or if they're just not sure of the knowledge setup that they're trying to set up against them. So I hope this helped. I hope that you will then apply this to your gameplay and get better with Yoshimitsu. All of these setups can be used at a beginner level. You just have to be confident in using them so that that way you can catch the player off guard. So if you like what you watch, give it a like, subscribe if you want to see more of my shit, and stay tuned.